yeah. while it is recording. This was a fascinating movie. This was, in many ways, the most interesting of the three, I would say. Oh, for sure. Yeah. In uh, one big way. Uh, in one big way for me. Yeah. Which we'll get into. Yeah, I'm excited. I, mean, I want your I watched reaction this. to my... And I was like, I have no idea how Ross is going to feel about this. And I'm, I'm I worried for our relationship. I did not feel the way I thought I would feel. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, you should definitely open with your thoughts, but uh, mine are mine frightened even myself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, do you want to say your name? I'm, I'm scared. We'll jump into this. Okay. All right. Ross. And Alan talking about movies. They may be best friends, but they always disagree. Ross. Alan. So Ross, we wrapped up the trilogy. We finally done it. We certainly did. It's been when, finally. I agree with the finally. <laughs> we started months ago now, right? It was like back in March, May. Oh yeah, I think so. Yeah, a while ago, before summer for sure. Yeah, I think we watched the first one when the third one was coming out, like in the theaters. So that whatever that that happened. was in like January, wasn't it? Was it that, that long was, ago? That was early, early in the year. I think so. Fairly yeah. early. I know it was in my old place. And, but yeah, all the last year, all these podcasts get mashed in a one memory for me. There's just one That's continuous fair, yeah. long. <laughs> I have a hard time keeping straight when I did it. Um, Understandable. I mean, I want to forget too. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'll, I'll, this is what I'm thinking. To start off mm -hmm. talking about God's Not Dead, A Light in the Darkness, not number three. Mm -hmm. But not number three, of course. Have you As seen that clip? <laughs> it's so I, I tried to look it up. I couldn't find it after you told me about it. Uh, I was very excited to find it. I couldn't find it, though. The, uh, the ATZ <laughs> show. I don't know if you ever watch, check out his stuff. He's got that I've clip. I've seen it pop up here and there. He's okay. got that clip and his review of it. But uh, Right. Um, so, on a scale of movies, like all movies in general, one to ten, <laughs> uh, I would rate this like a three, maybe a four. But on a scale okay. of Christian movies, <clears throat> this is probably a seven or an eight. It's a much higher range. Where number one, the first right. God's Not Dead is a one. It's it's terrible. Easily. Easily. It's Easily. you know <laughs> propaganda. It's it's awful. It's offensive. It's like mm -hmm. it hurt me to watch. The writing was bad, the lighting was bad, the acting was bad. Number two is slightly better in my memory. I, I could be wrong. But I feel like number two was a little bit better but still it's like a two or a three out of ten like it's it not more boring i think like yeah there was less offensive stuff going on because it was just the court case yeah there was less um weird depictions of other people who christians or at least the christians making the movies don't seem to understand yeah yeah they in the first one it was more personal the enemy yeah it was yeah. like this guy's a bad guy because he's an atheist where in the kevin second sorbo. one yeah kevin sorbo <laughs> in the second one it was like the government is against christianity and it's more <laughs> the whole government. <laughs> yeah. It's more um <laughs> it's less personal, so it doesn't feel as petty some in some way. Cause like there's some some truth a little bit. Like there's like a, a small grain of truth right. where the first one is just, you know, completely straw man. Uh yeah, the second absolutely. one is slightly better. But I was yeah. shocked. I went into this one, number three, yeah. expecting it more of the same, for it to be tone death, for it to be well, Fighting. I had to not number three. Not I had to correct oh, you. Sorry, you said sorry. A light, three, a, light a, light dark, a light in the darkness. Not number three. <laughs> <laughs> um, I expected it just to be, you know, just the same thing again. Just to be, you know, fighting enemies that don't exist and being a victim of, you know, imaginary bullies and the whole thing felt like a commentary mm -hmm. on the series. If you consider the pastor, is the series. He starts out trying to do good and goes crazy and starts hurting people and just loses yeah. it. And then he like finally is like, you know what? I've been wrong. I don't know what I've been saying this whole time. I've been trying to fight, trying to fight, trying to fight. And it's like, no, that's not the point. The point is about love. Mm -hmm. The point is about forgiveness. If I'm a yeah. problem to you guys, I have no problem moving if that makes your life better. So that's kind of my yeah. overall and opinion. Of what what uh, do you think of it? Because I know you're worried about this. I think you became a Christian from this movie. So I, well, almost, um, I'll be honest when I finished this movie, I, uh, scared myself yeah. because I thought the first thing I thought was that was actually kind of good. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, I, it, 
I'll get into this more now. It is a it's a fully functional movie, yes. which shocked me. Mm-hmm. That shocked me to my core. I was engaged. I thought the performances were actually like interesting. Like people seemed to care what they were doing. Yeah. The dialogue, it, it at times it felt like they were trying a bit too hard to seem like naturalistic, but yeah, yeah. it was structured like a movie. It had a it complete had conflict. Arc. There were characters who had like development and uh, conflicts that actually made sense and didn't exist to just yell propaganda at you. <laughs> yeah. And it had a resolution that I felt was ultimately extremely satisfying. Um, it was the ending I didn't expect them to do. I expected the 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 university staff to like bow over and let them keep the mm. church. Yeah. Like I was expecting that. And then for them to say, no, it's okay to let this go, but this still matters. We'll build something new free of this tragedy. Yeah. That was actually kind of a mature, I mean, I mean, on the God's not dead bell curve, it's not saying much, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but for this series, geez, it's loud outside <laughs> for this series. Um, it was shockingly good. And that's why it's the most effective propaganda because mm. I know where this movie is coming from. Yeah. I know the attitude it's coming from and they found a way to get their message across so succinctly and so effectively yeah. that it scared me that I enjoyed it because I know it is made with the same intentions mm. and the same mindset as the first two films. And I know the people behind it are thinking the exact same way Yeah, how to make it work. And that's mm. actually kind of frightening to me <laughs> because it means they've completed their model it means you can't just sit and point and laugh because i know yeah. there will be people who watch this movie and say oh that's actually really good maybe i should think about like, nothing not there's anything wrong with being a christian for yeah. these movies but the mindset you have to take this in context with the other two i think that's critical yeah. no for sure because if you consider this as just a movie it's fine. Yeah. It's totally, if this was a standalone movie, I would say, wow, this is actually kind of interesting and a mm-hmm. solid piece of Christian media that I didn't expect. But because I know where it came from and what it's built off of, I can't accept it as a legitimately good movie mm. because I know what it's based on. Like I finished it. I said, yeah, it's maybe a six or a seven if it was its own thing. Yeah. But because I recognize little things and there are little things about this movie that I definitely recognized as a uh, God's not dead esque. Uh, the most, um, the most obvious one was, um, well, first of all, the return of Josh Wheaton. You have no idea. Yeah. He was unnecessary. Was <laughs> he was so unnecessary. Boy, Josh Wheaton again. I screamed out loud in my home when he reappeared. <laughs> just, I was so happy. But when he's giving his whole, like Jesus was a social justice warrior speech. That was bad. And he's talking about it. He's talking about how he wants to help all these people. I was like, if they mention gay people, I will, I will, lo- I will donate to my local church. And they didn't. And through, th- through, through all three movies, gay people have been completely non-existent. And that yeah. is very emblematic. Mm-hmm. It's the little things like that. You have to notice, see, you can't, you can't fully, like, they've, they've, they focused right down on the Christianity and they, they attack some interesting angles and some interesting conflicts, mm-hmm. but they have completely eliminated the idea of any other sort of belief system or yes. sexuality or spirituality, mm-hmm. which is something to very much keep in mind. And, and when that hit me after watching, I was like, Oh no way. This is the same series. Yeah, no, for sure. It's definitely pro Christian. Like that's a hundred percent. Oh, yeah. oh uh, yeah. you think? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, Did you get up in the title? <laughs> <laughs> but when I watched it, I saw it much more as like an apology of the first two, even, even from the beginning mm-hmm. when, yeah uh jude i think is his name the black uh african pastor when yeah. he dies mm. it was visually very um representative of when kevin sorbo died in the first one you know it, like it felt like it was shot the same way oh, yeah, i guess the overhead shot with i the, can see that the panning out and stuff and but the mm-hmm. the tone so in the first one they're like ah oh, today's a great day kevin sorbo became a christian even though we just watched yeah. a man die in the street but <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna be so excited, yeah. And but in this one, he's Today like, was a good day. <laughs> yeah. In this one, the pastor's you he know, actually has emotions like a human. Yeah, he's mourning, he's screaming, yeah. he's crying. You know, it's like no, you know, just like really like a really good moment. And it, it felt like mm. we are killing this character off to say like, yeah, we screwed up the first time. That was a dumb reaction to the someone dying. Funeral and everything. It, it felt like a real movie mm-hmm. 
like the last one looked like a real movie, but it's actually emotionally like there were a few points where it actually kind of not quite got me because I was still aware of what I was watching, but yeah. I think it was um, arguing in the kitchen and they were just kind of yelling at you. Like that felt really real. Like I kind of connected with that mm-hmm. and um, like the funeral scene, I legitimately kind of felt for it and yeah. I was getting into this for the first time. And it, that was really, it was bizarre to experience this series and seeing these characters, um, it just, it was, it's, this is the weirdest I've felt watching a movie in a long time. Yeah. Cause well, with the other two, I would kind of, yeah, I had my phone out here and there and I'd laugh at things and I'd make notes. I don't have that many notes. Like I, most yeah, of my yeah. notes are just me writing like, why am I enjoying this? <laughs> I, I've written that a few times. Like, why do I think this is good? Yeah. But then, you know, the, the larger context kind of killed that. Mm. But it, it's, I mean, it's inoffensive. I can like this movie is largely in, it doesn't try to go after anyone in well, particular. Yeah. They, I think they take responsibility in this one. They say like yeah. all the, all the trauma or whatever, the atheist issues with the church, mm. they're like, Oh yeah, that's our fault. We did that. Like with yeah. the kid whose mom was being abused by her husband, gets a divorce, and then yeah, the church that was is like, insane. "You, you're a sinner." I never expected that. It's it's common. It's something that happens a lot. There's like a lot of stories yeah, like that absolutely. where the church is not yeah. accepting. Well, I know stories like that. Yeah, and so for them to be like, "Oh yeah, yeah. no, we are the ones who are making enemies." We like. It's like you, yeah. You call someone a name and they punch you, and then you cry about them punching you. It's like, well, you kind of you brought it upon yourself. You challenge them, yeah. When and then you get attacked. You, the you're not the they, victim. The fact that they have people in this movie directly addressing the idea that Christians are portraying a victim complex mm-hmm. shocked me to my core. Yeah. I never expected this series of all series to go. It's like they hired real filmmakers or something. It's I like, mean, they made <laughs> enough money to do it. <laughs> I, but the guy, I think it was the director of this. I was just watching the credits. I didn't, I don't care enough to look it up after, but I think it was written or at least co-written and directed by the same guy. Yeah. And I wonder if he was kind of like an outsider and mm-hmm. he came in and was like, we can tell an interesting story because like we've been saying the last two times we've covered these movies, there are interesting stories to tell with faith and with Christianity yeah, yeah. and with these situations. Mm-hmm. But the movies are almost refusing to do that. But this movie kind of tackles everything that i've wanted to see yeah. and that was why i was engaged because it was tackling these subjects and doing them fairly well like this kid who's feeling this guilt and he was formerly a christian and his girlfriend is kind of conflict there's a character who is conflicted about her christian faith yeah. in a god's not dead movie yeah like, that was insane <laughs> this movie is nuts <laughs> but this movie is crazy in the exact inverse way the other two movies are crazy yeah mm-hmm. Yeah, no, definitely in in light of the other ones, it's like, it's shocking yeah. that this is the follow-up. And, and that's why I how, think- it's, How do we get from two to this? I I don't, like, someone must have, like, smacked them down. They're just like, you know what? You guys are <laughs> making some bad stuff and doing Maybe. some damage. Like, because well, it, it all felt like it's so kind of, self-aware of everything uh, they had done wrong before. And yeah. they're like- of the series and of like the negative repercussions of the the how Christian culture has kind of affected American culture. Yeah, it's kind of like um, God's Not Dead one and two are kind of like Batman Forever and Batman Robin, and this is Batman Begins. Yeah, it's the same basic kind of concept. Yeah, yeah. It's a soft reboot. This is the Force <laughs> Awakens to the Star Wars prequels. Oh. It's the same characters. Mm. They're back. Same universe, but it's like someone who actually knows what they're doing is making a movie now. Yeah. Well, they, they did. It's that. It's crazy. They did. Uh, even the lighting, like you notice in the in the first one, it's it's yeah. intense. But they always it's, put it's atheists, really bright. It's very made for TV. Yeah. Well, they always put atheists in shadow and Christians <laughs> in light, and it's so apparent, tra- <laughs> or transparent, <laughs> what they're true. trying to do. It's so good. It's so good. But this one is like it's lit. Like oh no, let's not use lighting as a, a tool to make a point. Let's yeah. just do it naturally. Like it, it'll set the mood, but yeah. it won't set the, the message. But and there's it, some stylistic stuff to like the yellows in that church. That was really cool. I like mm-hmm. the look of that. And uh, I think, I think one thing I, what made me worried, I thought it was going to go in a very God's not dead direction was when um, 
they were a guy at the party after he killed a guy and he's uh, it's all like red lighting i'm like oh my god the party is like hell because the children are drinking <laughs> i was worried they're gonna do like show kids like doing drugs and stuff but they didn't it was just on that character why well, this I is had... almost it's, it's a, like it's a real movie i don't know how to feel <laughs> i'm really confused man i <laughs> had i was so anxious watching this movie because i was like man you guys are doing a really good job where When's are you gonna, gonna screw bad? it up yeah <laughs> when's it gonna get crazy <laughs> when does the shoe drop when, when dana loesch appeared i was kind of like oh no and the fact that they were giving voices to a lot of um like deep fox news people i was kind of like oh boy maybe these aren't the right people i mean but so they're probably all friends <laughs> with all of the um i don't know how you felt about it with all of the the news segments i i thought they were unnecessary because mm-hmm. they're all kind of distracting but yeah I thought they gave better points to the anti-Christian people in those segments than they did the Christian people. All the Christians came off like kind of aggressive, kind of ignorant and like just yeah. with their ears closed. But the everyone else was like, mm-hmm. hey, you're like, it sounds like they listened to the actual criticism of the movie and gave those points mm-hmm. to the people. Like they, I didn't feel like they were shying away from yeah. their faults before, which would have easily, they could have easily done. I don't remember yeah, any it's, it's... specifics, but I was like shocked when i saw that yeah the this movie had like natural conversations between people Mm -hmm. it's like when um when pastor dave and that girl are interacting and they're having conversation it like felt natural it felt like two human beings talking yeah the relationship between him and his brother i actually thought was pretty well fleshed out and like that crescendo and that argument when they're talking about their parents and everything i'm like this is actually hitting me that was and such a good scene when they were fighting in the kitchen. Like Dave actually gives a pretty good performance in this. He was tearing up there. There were a few times where he break some of his breakdowns I didn't quite buy, but they, yeah. there were a few times where he's starting to break into tears and I was okay, he's going for it. Everyone is going for it in this movie. Yeah. The, the, Which is weird because it's a God's Not Dead movie. <laughs> and there are still some like over like the um, the uh the the black kid who's always on Instagram, who's like the yeah. weird atheist guy mm. who has this like weird Instagram um atheist rants that was a little god's not deady for my taste Uh but even like at the end they don't have him like stay crazy he kind of like he he accepts the reality of things and he kind of like the con they put they have a really good central conflict with that kid i was shocked like that was actually pretty well incorporated into the story this kid he has this the one who threw friends around him the relationship yeah, the relationship yeah. with the girl I thought was pretty interesting. And like that affected her journey with her faith. Uh, she was a bit of a non character. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, even by God's well, not she dead was a, standards, a her, red she was herring. Like, You're supposed yeah, to think yeah. she was the the one who like gave him up. Mm-hmm. I don't is there any but that, even that like is there any the, point the in going text and then through the plot? Yeah. Should we explain what happened? Or I feel like anyone who's watching this had seen it. Or is aware. Of I don't, the three people who've seen God's Not Dead three, <laughs> you, me, and the other guy. I don't, I don't know. So <laughs> the basic premise or the basic plot is they. So at the end of the second one, the pastor doesn't turn in his <clears throat> sermons. Uh, right. which and we is, were complaining about that. Yeah, it was dumb. Which when it started, I actually I freaked out. I was like, they're actually doing it. <laughs> they're yeah. treating it like a sequel yeah. to a movie. <laughs> Yeah, I was really worried in the first few minutes because I was like, oh, here we go. They've already established a straw man issue, right? They already established the government is attacking the church. This is unfair. Yeah. And then instantly he gets out of jail because it's unreasonable. So they've already established like the government's unreasonable. They're breaking the law. The Christians are right. And you stand up for what you believe and you're going to get everything you want. So I was like, oh, okay, here we go again. Right. (laughs) Fantastic. But then the the uh the community freaks out they're like why do we have yeah. a church on a government school ground what does that even mean yeah. well, there's no mosque there's no temples there's no mm-hmm. there's nothing else why is there a church here and it turned out yeah. that originally the school was christian so they built a church but then the government bought mm-hmm. it so the church was still there so it was like all this like mm-hmm. that all made sense but then the school was like you know what mm-hmm. we need to just buy them out we need to get them off the get them out of here yeah they're causing too much and issues it- 
it, it all it all makes sense. I'm so angry because it all makes <laughs> sense because it, you have the controversy and like the constant controversy that's been called at cause of this school. It's rooted in the church. Of mm-hmm. course, the university would want them out. They would want to and they say enrollments down. They can't blame it all. That's a problem. It, it all makes sense. Why does this movie make so much sense? It's all reasonable <laughs> I didn't too. And this. I think I'm, on. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm freaking out. No, you're I'm good. So angry. <laughs> angry <laughs> so angry that i kind of enjoyed it <laughs> <laughs> it's all reasonable from every side too which is yeah <laughs> which is a brilliant thing that's, that's something they didn't do in the other ones at all they didn't even attempt you yeah know, not they, at all it's crazy the, you know they how, just how made it was <laughs> the muslim dad evil just pure yeah. evil and that's it like just this is evil. Unhuman, and, yeah. as bad as the atheists, frankly, who yeah. are just the scum of the earth. Yeah, d- the worst. <laughs> they need to all get ran over. Um, Dean Kane, the first <laughs> one. I'm just remembering now. I have cancer. This couldn't have waited till tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, Dean Kane. <laughs> uh, he really needed that paycheck. But yeah, so the pastor wanting to keep his church makes sense. You know, it was his father's mm-hmm. church. He's been there for a long time. Moving yeah. is a hassle. You know, they're gonna, they're offering him less than they would need to start a next the next one and so i was like okay that makes sense that he wants to stay makes sense for the school for one of them to go because it's bringing controversy it's not really uh fair for them to have a church there with nothing else and so it was like causing a lot of issues the people protesting that even makes sense because they're like you're you're causing problems you're doing all this stuff you're not you know you're not being uh positive to the community anyways get out of here and so I was like, oh, wow, this is, they've actually set something up here with layers, yeah. with depth, with, you know, they're, they're going to do something with this. There's like a conflict, like a movie. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah, weird. It's There's crazy. an inciting incident. What am I watching? <laughs> you sure this is a God's Not Dead movie? <laughs> <laughs> Did they put the wrong title on this one and ship it out? <laughs> and then so later on, the kid ends up, who's upset with the church overall because they uh, turned their back on his mom when she got a divorce. Mm-hmm. He was angry, spray painted the church, threw a brick through the window, and broke the gas line. Well, when the yeah. associate pastor, the black guy, Jude, he's the only one I Jude. name I know for some they, reason. They foreshadow his death so hard. Yeah. And I, I, I remember watching the trailer at one point, but I, I thought he might have died. I, I had it vague in my head. I, there was like an accident at the church, like a mm. fire or something. And they come in. He's the new associate pastor. He'll oh, be staying yeah. here. You know, dude, I see you like a brother. I'm like, he's so dead. <laughs> he is so dead. And his last words are going to be, God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. Like I saw it coming yeah. from a mile away, and it was—I won't lie—I kind of laughed a little bit when the explosion happened. He like <laughs> flew back. I—I was—I may be a bad person. These movies have made me a bad person. I'm allowed to laugh at tragedy when God not God's not. These aren't real movies. Really. They're not this real one is people. the closest one to a real movie. They're not. I, also, it's fake, so yeah. I can laugh at what I want. Yeah. But yeah, it was just. It was a very final destination e like he threw the brick at the perfect angle and hit the gas line he pulls in the light it just happens to burn out and make a spark that makes enough flame to burn the gas it reminded me of um what is the it was an adam sandler movie but it was a burt reynolds movie before then where he's in prison playing football i don't know off the top of my head oh, I, I can tell you yeah sorry They're, well they do the same it's a, a a light bulb death oh jack and jill oh uh, yeah jack and jill <laughs> i click i think yeah, that's uh, the one. but it, it was very much like identical to that but um so yeah he dies and then the pastor's struggling because now his best friend just died his church is blown up uh one of the things i i did not like is the time jump that they did it felt extremely unnecessary the that was a weird uh structural thing yeah, yeah i didn't quite get why they did that i think you could have played the movie i think they wanted to start with pastor dave and that and get that sort of to be the inciting incident yeah and then have their explanation but i think there was a better way to tell that than being like here because yeah. I, I that's a trope i kind of hate but well especially whatever. after like, that to- rick and morty episode did you ever see that one yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I actually watched that the other day. I was rewatching it. It was just like, <laughs> one. oh man, I just think should... stories should start where they start. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's true. I, I agree with that. Yeah, no, for sure. Because it was it, a terrible morning, but yeah. it it jumped back, and then I forgot it jumped back until they got back to the beginning. I was like, why is everyone like so <laughs> cool? Like, I, I the church burned down 
Cause it, yeah, actually, I kind of, I kind of missed it the first time. Yeah, I think I had, uh, I've had, to, uh, I was watching it on. I kept my uh, browser kept um, glitching out when I was uh, streaming it. Oh yeah, and I like looked at my phone for a second. I looked back up and I saw text fading away, and I saw some girl swimming. I'm like, what's going on? And then everyone was calm. I was like, oh, was that like a week earlier or something? And, like, I took me a while to realize there was a time jump, and I was yeah. like, this is really weird. This is a weird way to treat this. Yeah, but perfectly, God's not dead. But no, then it turned into a real movie again. And it tricked me. <laughs> <laughs> this movie tricked me. I feel tricked. I came in here to watch God's Not Dead 3, and I was given a real film. Well, there's, I did not sign up for a real movie. There's still that, what is it, Revolutionary Road or something like that? Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> so don't worry. There's still... No, you, you know what we're watching next, Alan. You yes, know what we're watching the, next. The Kissing Booth. I cannot wait. Netflix is The Kissing Booth. <laughs> you owe me for this. <laughs> um months months you've subjected me to this trilogy you're taking the you, kissing booth as you love the third one don't act like you didn't i, I didn't love it. <laughs> it's your favorite movie of upset. the year it's gonna end up on your upset. top 10 list the end of the year you're wrap just, up. It, nothing can it, nothing will surpass mama me <laughs> um so the pastor that's <laughs> the pastor is uh spiraling out and he's having a hard time goes to mm -hmm. visit his brother who's a lawyer and then they come back and the brother is now working uh, to help. So the brother's an atheist, but he's trying to save the church because it's unlawful mm -hmm. what the school's trying to do. And it's clear from yeah. the beginning that the court case uh, that he's going to win. Like there's no... I was I was so worried we're gonna, trying to get another movie about a court case yeah. that was just going to go on for another hour. Yeah. Actually, actually, I really like the scene where the brother went to get that to, to the judge. The cease church. and desist. It kind of showed that he was really crafty and he didn't really care about it. Yeah. And he went in and did like the subterfuge. She went in. She's like, I'm at mass. He's like, well, it's about a church. I'm like, that's actually really clever that he would go and do that. And a good way of establishing that he doesn't really care about all this. Yeah. And he's just trying to help. That what? was a really good kind of character building moment. It's like it's a real movie or something. <laughs> I had two major issues with this movie. One okay. of them is the brother, Pierce. He okay. is clearly the writer's favorite character. He's the most... Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he should have been the main character. Yeah, maybe. It would have been interesting to get like an outsider view on it. Well, the, You can't make an atheist a main character in no, these movies I know. unless he turns Christian. <laughs> but as a story... Like if you don't, if this is not a pure flicks thing, if this is not a Christian movie, he would have been the main character. His brother oh, would have shown up and been like, "Hey, my church blew up," you know, I'm, and so it would have been like a Aaron Brockovich type thing, like you know, where he's fighting to do that. And so there's a clear conflict in the writing of like, mm -hmm. oh well, he's definitely the most interesting, and yeah, but we can't use him as much as we want to. So there's, there's like that weird, almost like Kylo Ren in uh, the newer Star Wars movies, you can tell the writers love him and give him all yeah. the depth, but there's no, <laughs> there's nothing to balance it out on the other end. So that, I thought that yeah, was true. one, one failing of this movie. I mean, there's okay. plenty, but that was one of the big ones. Um, yeah. I mean, in comparison to <coughs> Pastor Dave, he's like, Pastor Dave is kind of a, a flat line in all of these movies. Yeah. I mean, at least performance wise. And he had, I guess with his like love interest, he had a little more to do, but in general, he just doesn't really contribute much. Yeah. Like, yeah, he, I mean, he's a, yeah. he's kind of a coat hanger for anger or towards the end. At least he's just like, and this, yeah, I'm, well, I'm I mean, he kind of. He has like a an arc of like kind of deterioration. Like when he went yeah. and started like up that kid when he got in the fight with the I was like, I was I was into it. I was feeling that. I was yeah. Like, yeah, it makes sense to this guy who's kind of losing everything would just start like lashing out. And then, you know, people are filming him and it's like hurting the reputation of like the upcoming court case. And by the time I was looking at how far we were into the movie and they were still talking about the court case, I was like Oh, are we not gonna get a court case? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, there's like twenty the minutes thing. left, and there's no way they're gonna do a whole court case in twenty minutes. I doubt that. That was the same thing I went through. I was like, oh, maybe they're actually just gonna give up. Like the whole, yeah. which, which I was so happy with because as yeah. as a Christian myself, the the message shouldn't be like, I mean, Christ says it in the Bible directly. It's like your yeah. enemy slaps you, you turn the other cheek, right? Like you don't mm -hmm. fight back, you don't hit back, you don't. And the first two movies are like, we have to fight. We have to stand up for what it's, we it's, believe. We have to fight. And if you fight, you get whatever you want and more. Yeah. Because the messages of the first two movies. Mm -hmm. 
first one, not only will you win the moral argument, but the professor will die and become a Christian. Yeah, it was like a weird, Very dangerous mindset. Yeah. Karma thing added in there. That's not. Mm -hmm. It was like out of yeah. nowhere. It was like, oh, he got yeah. his comeuppance for being atheist. I was like, that's what he gets. <laughs> that's what he gets, man. Um. So the court case is going on, and it all goes through. Um, they're going back and forth through, um, they're like meeting with each other. They're not actually in the court yet. And yeah. I don't know, there's not, there's not really a lot, anything that's like important to the premise. Is there, am I skipping it over? It kind of slows down. It slows down later on, like mm. right before, I mean, actually as the third act kind of kicks in, it gets really slow. Yeah. Like it, right when it should be ramping up, it kind of, I mean, which makes sense given that the, the ending is kind of a big anti-climax, but yeah they're building a lot of, they build a lot of character stuff in the first two acts and I was kind of into it and I was like, okay, where's this going? And then let's light a bunch of candles and everyone's okay. And then the so, news talks about it some more and stuff. And it's like, oh, it's over, I guess. <laughs> the second thing that I didn't like was the ending. Mm -hmm. I really had a hard time mm -hmm. with it. It was exactly at the candle moment when I was like, oh, you guys, right. you missed it. You're so close. You're almost there. You're right at the finish line and you fell on your face. It, yeah, was, it was a little too uh, a little too like we got to be inspirational now yeah it felt a, like because they have the moment where he's like okay we've given up like we're figuring it out and everyone i'd like it if everyone had just kind of like dropped their signs and walked away yeah if they had had something like that but he's like put down your signs we're that, all together yeah that Light was the candle that was when it was kind of, like they, they, pushed, they pushed it in a very god's not dead direction yeah because <laughs> for me yeah. what i would have preferred to seen is for him to get up there and you know, say you know i apologize I've been fighting you when I should have been loving you. You guys are right. If I'm a, if we're a problem here, if we're not a, a positive to the community, we'll leave. That's we. All we do is want to yeah. take care of you and love you and show you that. So if us yeah. leaving does that the best, we'll do that. I wanted the crowd to cheer. You know, like we won, they we did it, it. We had it right there. You they know, had it right there. <laughs> like we got what we wanted. We got what we were fighting for. And for him to leave ostracized from that community. And to sit in the sacrifice that he actually made, then you could still have the uh, the the blogger, the vlogger, whatever, say what he says, which where, I thought was a good moment of him. Like, where was cancer blogger? Where was oh, cancer blogger? I'm glad this? they got rid of her and Duck Dynasty. <laughs> um, I missed Duck Dynasty. I was I was waiting for a Duck Dynasty camera. Oh. The closest we got to that was uh, Dana Loesch, I believe. That was pretty. That was that made my skin crawl a little bit. I was like, really? She's in this. <laughs> Really, you're putting her on the big screen. Really, does she need more exposure? Really, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. but yeah. So I would like to see him leave as mm -hmm. having the the moral, the spiritual victory of like he understood what it's all about, what the point is. The community who is not Christian feeling like they won because they got what they wanted, right? They don't need to have a a Christian victory for themselves, also. Like, but for him to impact just a few people. You know, like the yeah, brother, that, yeah. the brother, you know, picking up his Bible at the end. I thought it was a good ambiguous ending for him because I was like, oh, they're going to make yeah. him a Christian. That's going to be too much. But him just like yeah. picking it up, like he took it home. Yeah. It was like a Could good just be like a connection with his family again. He's rebuilding that. Not yeah. necessarily to be a Christian, which was smart, and, yeah. but it could be either way. Yeah. Both kind of make sense. And then or he's just reading it to read it again. Like it's comfort. Who knows? Yeah. And then for yeah. the pastor not to build a new church i i really dislike that because it's like yeah, what did you sacrifice yeah. what did you give up it looks like you're getting a nice new church everyone loves mm -hmm. you now like you 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 laid down as a sacrifice you know you gave you were a martyr yeah. only just to gain more I, and so i was I like i think it would have uh, been a little I think it would have been too much to ask of this series to not be a completely happy ending. No, I know. Cause everyone like, like the, the kid who killed the guy, he gets like let off with mm. no charges or anything. And like he reunites. I was no, when this started, I was waiting for that girl to end up with Josh Wheaton. I was, okay. I sincerely thought that was going to happen. Cause yeah. as soon as she goes to the group and they're like talking and I'm like, okay, so she's Josh Wheaton's new girlfriend. He finally found a, a Christian girl for him. Cause the whole thing in the first movie was like, you love God too much. Well, you know what? We're done, Becky, or whatever. Yeah. And then in this one, this girl comes along. He's like, I don't know if I love Jesus. And I thought he was going to like give her like five speeches about why she should. And yeah. then she was going to be Christian again. And at the, I mean, like in, in terms of her, like I said, being like a non-character at the end, she is just kind of like, <laughs> like that whole, that whole arc is just kind of resolved by yeah. her being like, 
hey god you're back in my life we're good yeah the end (laughs) yeah yeah she was they play the god's not dead song (laughs) yeah i I think her only purpose was for you to think that she betrayed her boyfriend because he texts turns out that he texts pastor dave saying that it was him he like he does it Mm -hmm. anonymously says his full name yeah pastor dave freaks out and beats him up which Mm -hmm. i thought was like yeah no that makes sense like if someone killed my best friend then they told me who did it i'd probably want to beat him up like that seems reasonable but then yeah, especially the i thought his motivation behind it was kind of uh ham-fisted like there should have been someone else who was like you should have been forgiving because he when he confronts him in the the prison he's like i did it because i was hoping you would forgive me i guess there was someone yeah. who spoke into the pastor dave before about he needs to forgive it was josh Whedon. yeah i, I it was Josh Wheaton, of course, the perfect man. Uh, <laughs> Josh Wheaton, Jesus was Jesus was the original social justice warrior. Now, it, is social oh. justice a type of law? I was I, conf- I was confused <laughs> I'm, by that. I'm a film student, man. I don't know because <laughs> he was like uh, Josh Wheaton was in law or go- in law school, mm. but he dropped yeah. out. And Pierce is like, "Why did you drop out? You seem really smart. You seem like you could do this." Yeah. He's like, what? Which was a stretch for Josh Wheaton. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> what what law were you or what what type of law were you pursuing? He's like, oh, yeah. the same as you, social social justice. Social yeah, social stuff. I, I think he said like a specific term I don't remember. I thought it was I, I don't know. Social justice. And because I it stood he out. To that, me. Like, later on, I don't think I don't think he, he said like specifically like social justice law, but it was it, he he kind of just like set a string of things together and that was one of them. Okay. And I didn't know which one was the actual term. So yeah, yeah, I'm with you there. I don't know exactly what he was studying. But yeah, I mean, of course he became a missionary or uh, like he came back to the not the a missionary, minister. but he came back to the came back to the church i'm like of course why wouldn't he <laughs> yeah <clears throat> um but yeah so that i mean that's pretty much the whole movie i think right is there anything else yeah. i thought the scene with the black pastor was really good when he's like you know oh, if yeah. you knew yeah. if you were the one going through this persecution you would understand better you wouldn't tell me to like you know uh be more loving you'd be more willing right. to fight and he's like man mm-hmm. If I took all the bricks that have been thrown through my window, I could build you a new church. He's like, that was a fantastic line. I really yeah. like that line a lot. Yeah. And I'm, oh, actually, a scene I like too is when um, it was the the guy. I think I think he was a maybe a professor, but he was um he was like an administrator at the university, and he huh. was um Pastor Dave's friend. And he's at home, and a brick gets thrown through his window, and yeah. he like freaks out at Dave's house, and they get in a fight because like this is starting to affect both of them and you kind of see like how that kind of conflict can breed more and more conflict and i figured they wouldn't give him much perspective or he would be than he was but no he's given like a complete like three-dimensional approach too yeah it is very much like but he he just cares about his job and he cares about his family and that's his character but it it just clicks like it works in this yeah that simplicity works i thought that was a great scene to add in the movie too because you have the atheist throwing a brick through the window of the church, yeah. right? Then the pastor mm-hmm. goes on TV and is like, you know, we're fighting this. This is not against, or this is against the law. What the school's doing is unfair. Yeah. Then the 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 Christians freak out, start mm-hmm. harassing him, start calling him on the phone all the time, doing all the stuff that you would normally think would be anti-Christian, right? Like you'd be the, the non-Christians doing like, but they're like, no, the Christians are yeah. crazy too. Look at them. Look at how this movie acting. makes this movie makes Christians do bad things, mm-hmm. which I never expected this series to have the balls to do <laughs> because every Christian character so far has been either completely innocent or just completely uh, like inte- intellectually and morally superior. Yeah. Yeah. If yeah. they're not they're I, just like the, per- they're all perfect. And in this, you see like the dark side of both sides, which yeah. is a conflict I find fascinating in real life. Mm-hmm. And the hypocrisy of that and the idea of like we embody goodness and then you're still doing the things that the people you are against are doing. And that's what happens in real life. And yeah. it happens in – why is this movie kind of good, man? Why why well, is this happening to I me? think it's <laughs> it, – because it is – it does do a good job at responding to the criticism. And it's attacking yeah. uh, uh, fanaticalism. That's not a word. What am I trying Fanaticism? to say? Fanaticism? Radicalism? Yeah. Radicalism? Like Fanaticism the, is, that's, yeah. Um, it's attacking that. It's attacking the, the I'm closing my ears, mm-hmm. I'm closing my eyes, and I'm only hearing my own thing, the echo chamber type stuff. Right. And they're like, 
the main message is, hey, we need to stop fighting and start listening to each other because yeah. we're not getting it's anywhere. It's a movie about, yeah, it's about perspective in a lot of ways, mm. which is shocking because uh, like we've talked about the last two movies, the perspective you see are either Christians going on and on about how everything's sad and everything sucks for them and they're persecuted or atheists like basically twirling their mustaches and sitting in shadowy rooms, eating dinners, discussing how they're going to destroy God. Yeah. Like that's been it. Yeah. And in this, there's like nuance. There's no vilification of the atheists and deification of the Christians. Yeah. Kind of people. And they're all just kind of dealing with a terrible situation that they're trying to find a common resolution <clears throat> to. And they have their distinct motivations that all makes it's a kind of a good story <laughs> yeah <laughs> but I think, I, again i will worry that people will watch something i think this is actually a good movie i, I don't and i know where it's coming from i yeah. know the pure flicks attitude i know like the other two movies mm. i don't think this was made to be like any this was not made with the intentions to be anything other than the first two it's mm. just executed a lot better yeah i i see it that the I, same thing to these I understand that, but I, I think coming from it as a Christian myself, I'm like, I watch this and I'm like, man, this is right. This is way more representative of what I believe. Well, if someone sees I this, I think there were people who came in, yeah, people who came in from the outside to make this movie who saw an opportunity with the storytelling, mm -hmm. and you know, they maybe or maybe even it was the same people working on it as the first two. I imagine there were some. Yeah, this did feel distinctly different, like in tone, in style, in every way this felt like a different kind of movie yeah so i wonder how much outside influence resulted in it being like this because i feel like there must have been a lot i think so i i mean unless it was like a an extreme change internally like i just right. I, I don't Possible. see that yeah uh i don't see that happening like that's that's like a huge no, 180 you know um, in terms of like yeah what pure flicks has been trying to do mm -hmm. not even in these movies in all their movies and like the messages they portray yeah. and the way they go about telling these stories this coming out of nowhere basically it almost feels a little more suspicious <laughs> <laughs> like i i feel like this movie is hiding a dark secret i don't know what it is it's like <laughs> there's something dark behind this and it makes me uncomfortable <laughs> that it's like this functions as a movie but i know Maybe they were just like, if we put in some self-awareness, mm -hmm. but we don't actually believe it, like that's fine. I don't know who had the final say on like what got to go into this movie. I imagine yeah. it was the writer and director primarily, but where did they come from? Who are they? Have they been with Pure Flix the whole time? Yeah. And suddenly they just knew how to make a movie all of a sudden? Like, I don't know. <laughs> it's confusing. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, yeah. Like, I don't know. I, For me, when I'm watching it, my, my understanding or the way I took it or the way... I saw it as the most effective maybe is a response to the people who love the first two. It's yeah, uh, that's right. it's like, you guys love this. You are like yelling at people. You're tweeting hashtag God's not dead at people. Oh, that's something I want to bring up after I make this point. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, but the, you know, the, you're tweeting all this stuff, but we weren't being loving. You need to recognize that you need to look at who yeah. you were in that situation and that you were doing yeah. something wrong. We need to I be guess. better. Is that, that's how I, I, I see it. That's, that's a good point. I want to look into the background of this movie more. Yeah. Because like I said, I want to, if I see it as a movie in a vacuum, it would be closer to like a six or a seven out of, like it's legitimately a well put together story. Uh, like on a, a scale of like all movies, you put it that high? I, w I would say like in terms of like just a movie, I was in like, there are th like the ending is really lame. The whole third act is kind of a flat line, but then <laughs> the characters are weak here and there. But like yeah. in terms of, just conflict yeah like i was just surprised and it's, it's super engaging that i haven't seen in a movie before yeah it's, and if a movie does that like it's it's telling me things that no movie has told me yeah and if that's that's a victory for a film at this point i think and i will always give a movie points for that that's why this movie is for me like a four yeah, yeah not into like a two or a three if it was just the same thing again then it would have been like probably a one or a two like the first two are but yeah. this movie kind of did some new things it it put some effort into looking and feeling like a real movie the editing even like the sound design and the way they mixed it transitions between scenes there was some good composition it, it's it's kind of okay 
Yeah. And I, well, I, I think want to it's... look more into like the production because I want to know where the people who made this came from. Mm. And if they came from the outside and said, we have to do something better with this and we can, then I would give this movie more credit. Okay. Yeah. I think this I think. is yeah. probably the best Christian movie I've ever seen. I'm trying to think fireproof of the three I've seen. This is the best. <laughs> <laughs> this is certainly the best. There's a, a movie called fireproof, which is uh, a Kirk Cameron film which I know sounds scary, but it's about marriage and about keeping your marriage. <laughs> it sounds very scary. <laughs> uh, up to me. Uh. <laughs> it's about keeping your marriage uh, healthy. And so okay. it, it's not so much evangelistic in, you know, it's not like they're not trying to trick people into being Christian with it. You know, they're like, Hey, don't be a jerk husband. Be, you know, sacrificing, and loving your wife. Yeah. So like that one was pretty good. Cause there wasn't like a, a an weird... overtly christian slant to it yeah i mean there was in there, there was it was that. in there but like it wasn't the point i guess is what you're saying well it wasn't it wasn't evangelistic right it wasn't to bring people yeah. into being christian it was like right. here's a movie to christians about how to be in a marriage and so like okay with that it was like oh so there's no weird hidden message or propaganda underneath it or like you right. know it's like a tool almost i don't know uh so that one's pretty yeah. good um, okay. but I think this is better and yeah, I mean, shockingly competent. I think, <laughs> I think the story though, again, if it wasn't a Christian film, it would have been a better movie had it been. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. If it was like, if someone like, if like a, if a real, not that's rude. If like a, a, a named filmmaker was doing a story like this, or yeah. if it was like a Netflix original or something. Oh yeah. If it was under a studio head, like this would be a story I could see some, I could adapt this into something that was more interesting. Honestly, yeah. I, that might be a fun little writing experiment is like taking the basic framework of this story and trying to like cut out some of the evangelistic stuff and some, well, maybe the news stuff and yeah, like making it, putting it right on these characters and that conflict because like the fa the familial stuff and the stuff with the questioning faith i thought that was all pretty solid and i wanted to see how it resolved and it all resolved in pretty generic way i think the relationship between the brothers is what holds this movie together yeah well that's the yeah, that's what works best yeah had this been pierce's movie right had he been the main character mm -hmm. you start the movie with him the brother comes in ex you know says about the church getting blown up and then he comes yeah. into the world Right, maybe you mm -hmm. called open with the church blowing up or whatever. Church blowing up, yeah, I was gonna say. But uh, like then you jump thing. to Pierce, and then the conflict is their relationship. It's not a, yeah. it's not a spiritual thing. It's a, it's a familial thing. It's, yeah. you know, I became an atheist. You guys abandoned me. You feel like yeah. I gave up on you because I changed my faith. But like all that stuff is still great. And the B story would be the kid who caused the accident. Yeah. I'd make like probably want it to be a different accident. And I would maybe, I guess if we're just, if we're doing like a screenwriting exercise, I'd want it to be like maybe him questioning his faith other than aside from him, other than him, like um, having lost it and like kind of making his way back to it, because this would be a good, like kind of uh, test, you know, mm. to be like, is this part of God's plan <clears throat> for me? Does he want this to happen? And like, why is he putting me through this? Yeah. And like, I mean, if it was like a real movie, like a, like a one that was going for, it, I think like it would end with him, like losing his faith maybe. Yeah. And being like this, this, I have to like, I can't look at everything through this lens. Well, because I, sometimes there's more to it. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's a strong point, uh, in filmmaking to leave. Say you have three characters, right? You have the pastor yeah. who's reaffirmed, like he's got, Everyone goes through a crisis of faith, right? Yeah. Uh, but the pastor's reaffirmed throughout it. The yeah. the lawyer is ambiguous about it. He's like, I was yeah. so sure that atheism was right, but now I'm like, okay. I'm not really sure. Then you have the kid who was questioning about it from the beginning. So they all just kind of move around a little bit, you know. The and then he's like, you know what? I'm yeah. I'm done. This is this is not what I want. This is not because that's that's Honestly, real yeah. life, you know. Because people. If this this is like a movie I can talk to people about, which is weird. Yeah. Cause mm -hmm. I've, I've talked to people after You're watching the first two and I said like, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, it's like I watched a real movie, not a, not a particularly good one, but an yeah. okay one. Mm -hmm. And the first two are just insane. Like I've talked to people and they're like, you gotta watch these. These are crazy. We gotta get <laughs> papers and just watch them back to back one and two with drinks. That would be amazing. Yeah. You get a bunch of film students in a room and they'll just lose their mind. <laughs> <laughs> i can picture a bunch of the film students i know trying to watch these movies they die i'd kill half of them easily <laughs> so, 
one. Uh, like, yeah, they actually touch on some interesting story and character stuff that I think had this not been under pure flicks slash quality flicks. Yeah. I, <laughs> Which well, is this a one weird title card. <laughs> I disagreed with both, but <laughs> the the how much effort the production they put into this one was shocking compared to especially the first one. The first one was off. Yeah, that looked like yeah they made that in the afternoon. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there was one take for every shot, and they and they had a storyboard which was just two stick figures. I should have looked we'll figure up, it out. <laughs> I should have looked up what they made on this one. I think this is the worst. This has done the worst. Um, probably i would imagine because the last two have like terrible reputation the first one easily did the best it made like 200 million or something it made a bunch of money i, mean, I think it, it went was, from it was made for two and it made 65 and then the that's actually probably that's it did not make 200 what am i talking about <laughs> <laughs> it was basically the avengers <laughs> I've, I've, I've like extrapolated in my head so much because i want to make it feel well scarier. the whole series it made 200 the whole series yeah. might be pushing 200 million the trilogy yeah, together well, that might be right. Which is well, a ton of money, especially for how little they've put into it. Um, yeah, but, uh, but I mean, like, I'm thinking back to when we were first talking about these movies, <coughs> and I think we made a joke that after we watched the first one, you're like, "Oh yeah, watch the second one, then go see the third one in theaters." Yeah, yeah. I was going to do it. Yeah. If I had watched this in theaters, I might have kind of had a solid time. Like, yeah. I might have actually. Walked you might have been like, a pastor actually, by now. I'm. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I'm sorry. I'm done with my film degree. I'm going to do something more meaningful. You're going to be the Josh Whedon of not the, oh, not I the could. director. I could, be Josh Whedon. <laughs> I could finally, I could finally assume the role I was born to play Josh Whedon. Oh. Um, did, you, did you actually know before we go on, did you notice that the kid who caused the accent, his name was Adam. Was that a Bible thing? <laughs> I was trying to maybe. find some sort of, correlation because i was they, they said his name a lot they said his name was adam a lot i'm like is that I, a thing i think that I'm trying to do something with that i think that's more filmmaking like uh then mm-hmm. then like i think that might be giving this movie too much credit because that's something they use in filmmaking right. a lot right is a use adam oh, as yeah, a yeah. reference i don't think they were con- how this movie's considering how that. this movie's constructed uh, i was like they probably have some sort of reference like they probably have some yeah, I don't know. Idea there's, with that? There's no I, like. Just waiting for the girl. <laughs> that would have been so good. There was no like first, first man element of his story. You know what I mean? Like there's no. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, Maybe. I mean, Titus like, would have been better, or Timothy. Think... Timothy would have been a better one. What am I thinking? Not Timothy. I mean, Thomas. Titus would have doubting, been great. The doubting <laughs> disciple. <laughs> For what? no reason, his kid's name is Titus. <laughs> the obvious one kid to see really be. <laughs> what are you supposed to do? This is my this is my friend Apple. <laughs> She's great. Don't don't touch her though. I don't know. Yeah, Thomas. Leave her alone. That's what I meant to say. I don't know what happened to my brain. My brain just shut down on me. Um, this movie kind of killed my brain a little bit. This movie made my brain very confused and upset. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know. I think it's again. I think watching it, I was like. Up until the end, up until the candles. The candles is where I was disappointed in it. But I'll, I'll, like, everything uh, okay. yeah. everything before that was like, no, this actually represents my beliefs. This idea okay. well, that's good. of <laughs> like when you're attacked, you don't, you don't fight back out of pride, out yeah. of a sense of justice. It's like you do the loving thing. You do, you care mm-hmm. about the person who's attacking you because when someone's attacking you, it's because they're hurt. And so it's like, you need to recognize that you need to see that and care about them as a person and understand their intentions behind the attack. Mm -hmm. And so it's like that message that they're putting out, it's like, oh, wow, this is actually really good. And they're the smart. It's weirdly smart. (laughs) (laughs) The, the commentary, the commentary, uh, against the people, well, the commentary against the series itself and the people who support it, I thought was great. And so like, for me, Mm -hmm. If you cut out that ending, it's like, man, this is, this is like really, really good. Um, yeah. If you if they restructured it a little bit, that would have been like, would have been like a far more effective ending. Yeah, that that was and, dumb. Yeah. As soon as he said, "Put down your signs," like, 
as soon as he like assumed control over the crowd who was against him yeah immediately i was like what is this actually uh, like there were some there were some moments of like legitimate comedy that kind of made sense with the characters like um when when the brother told him to stall and he just started reading (laughs) the whole bible i laughed out loud i I couldn't believe i thought that was really funny yeah this is perfect like awkward this is I thought something in my head, which was, this is what Pastor Dave would do. Yeah. And that scared mm-hmm. me because I was thinking about it like a real movie, like a real <laughs> series. I was like, yeah, Pastor Dave would totally just read the Bible cover to cover. Yeah. And when the news is reporting on it too, he appears to be reading the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> it was just perfect. Like that, that was a great moment. Yeah. No, that's a great point that it was a, yeah. it was true to the character. It wasn't yeah. it, like a lot of times gags are just gags they don't care about the and character there's and the, been some awkward comedy in these movies yeah one of the like that whole thing with the second one with the guy who was like he did he did dinner the rental car guy in the first one and then he was oh, working yeah. at a diner or yeah. something like that it was just so awkward yeah it was uncomfortable one, yeah. of the, one of the other things that i thought kind of fell flat was the uh the sculptor that whole metaphor they kept trying to hit on where she's was like interesting yeah she was like, "Oh, look at that! It's amazing that he sees this that out of and that. Sees that inside that. That was a little much. It, it was, was a little like much. I a think. heavy handed. And then she brings it up again. I was like, "Man, you already made your point. You really have to do <laughs> it again. It? It's like the church. <laughs> <laughs> it's like God. Do you get it? <laughs> um, but one of the things I know you gave up on this movie as soon as the credits rolled. You missed out yeah. on the mid credit scene." which I was <laughs> frustrated by. Not you, but it's the mid credit scene. I don't care. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's not Nick Fury. Well, it's the, actually the, the Christian equivalent of this cinematic it is, universe. It was the black one. He didn't have an eye patch, okay. but wow. it was the black newsboy. Uh, okay. He, mid credit, he comes up and he's like, this story of sacrifice and suffering is common throughout. You know, we should tell everyone about this movie Oh, tweet God. everyone <laughs> hashtag god's not dead to spread the word and i was like well, well, that's, what why that just lost a star <laughs> yeah no <laughs> for me too down. i was like it's terrible why did you do that like you were so good up we're, until this yeah, point the, yeah, the news boys five seconds that's all they should be in this movie for <laughs> they're not actors <laughs> they were uh, that was so a weird bad. scene too it felt like they really needed a place to put the news boys in and they just had them in there doing this weird thing with the cross like this part's god and this part is you. And right in the middle, that's where Jesus comes in. I'm like, what are we doing here? What, what does this have to do with anything? <laughs> which one was that? That was the second one? No, it was in the third one. It was this one. That was their cameo. They're on like a news station talking to this guy. And they're making um, crosses with their arms. I don't like, remember this, that the, at all. That's it. I did not hallucinate this, I swear. I think you <laughs> might have. Like the vertical part is... I'm, <laughs> this movie broke me. <laughs> like the vertical part is God. Mm-hmm. And, but you forget about the horizontal part. The horizontal part is you. People are so focused on this part, they forget about this part. And then one guy just goes... No and in the middle of the intersect, that's where Jesus is. It was really weird. It was a bizarre scene. I have Completely zero out of idea. Because I saw... I, I watched the credits because I was like... I saw in the beginning when they were given the credits, the opening credits... It said uh, special appearance by the newsboys. And I watched the whole movie. I was yeah. like, oh, they weren't in it. There's clearly a credit scene. I'll just watch the credits. They were, full, they were in it. You missed the scene. You missed the how, classic uh, Jesus how that's possible. scene. It's, I, that's amazing. I guess you have to rewatch it. Because I, <laughs> I was paying attention to thing. this movie. I was watching the. <laughs> I was like really yeah, engaged. I was kind of into it. <laughs> but the, the um, every news thing. I checked out, I guess. It, those were all. Yeah. Those when it comes to those, tough. I was kind of like, uh, because I couldn't, I, I guess I had, a, I had a hard time telling which ones were real and which ones weren't. Yeah. And I think the ones that were real, I like recognized the people. And I was like, oh, do we need them in a movie? And then the rest of them, I was like, uh, who, who cares? Well, okay. This <laughs> is it, a question about just filmmaking in general. But why, yeah. why can't they ever get that right? The... They never get the tone or the feeling of a news, like a new show when they input mm-hmm. it into a movie, even if it takes up the full screen, right? Like I get it I when you have it on yeah. a TV in frame, like there's that yeah, weird. That, that usually works better. But when it's, when it's in the actual movie, like when it cuts to a scene yeah. like right on the screen, I know what you mean. I think it has a lot to do. My theory is always, I don't know if there's a specific technical thing. My theory has always been, it's a thing to do with depth 
because they have like the actual sets in newsrooms and yeah. they have a full studio and stuff, but they just green screen them on and you can make that you can, there's a dissonance between what the outline is and there's a very, just a flat background behind them and yeah. you can read that difference mm. between an actual studio yeah. or like people behind them and stuff. Like I, I think that's it. That's my only okay. answer I have my, for that. I just read it like that because my theory was always that it was the camera that they used. That could be it too. That they, it's a different, different kind. Yeah. Yeah, that they just keep consistent with what they have because they already rented that mm-hmm. camera, and it just right. never. But it's just, it seems so simple. Like I don't get why it always never works. Like in Arrow, the first season. I don't know if you want to talk about Arrow more, mm-hmm. but oh, the, <laughs> that part of my life is behind me. <laughs> every don't time, drag me back to that dark. Place. Every time they cut to the, the news anchors, it was like, oh, this is not. Yeah, <laughs> this looks terrible. And that's how I felt every time they did it here. It was just like, this this is not right. Or even when they use uh, computer screens, they show like a website or something. I don't know. I, did, you, did I lose you? I think I might have lost you. All right. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, cool. Yeah, now you're back. All right. Awesome. Well, um, overall, if you, yeah. how would you like to summarize this movie? 10 out of 10, everyone should see it, become a Christian today. <laughs> well, those are the other two. I would say because of the broader context in which I absorbed this movie in comparison to the other two, I would say it's a four out of 10 Yeah, because it's well-made. There's some really dumb things. The ending really doesn't work <clears> and it <throat> kind of kills it. Yeah. And the, it gets a little evangelical here and there, but overall I think there is enough good stuff in there that I think it actually warrants a watch. Yeah. Unfortunately yeah. to get it, you kind of have to watch the first two, yeah. but just read the Wikipedia articles. That'll save you a lot of time and uh, <laughs> brain cells. And yeah, I think this is honestly worth checking out just in terms of like seeing a few grasps at potential and a few almost victories in storytelling. Yeah. They almost sucked the landing, but they didn't. Yeah. No, I think I, I agree with you on the rating. I would say if I, on a if all movies combined, I would give this somewhere a four out of 10. And yeah. uh, mostly the ending is really what kind of ruined it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, as yeah. Christian media, I think this is one of the best movies I've ever seen out of Christian that's films. That's a victory in a way. <laughs> in and, a way. Uh, I think it's actually pretty important if you are a Christian to see it because it it the message that it's putting across is you're not a victim you one have made yeah. victims yourself the church as a whole like you need to recognize yeah. that you need to understand that you need to be loving like everything that it was trying to do beyond the ending the wrap up where it's like oh everyone's great and everything's perfect everyone's happy everyone's good everyone's christian again don't like, worry kids <laughs> that that element of it is is wrong and gross every time i see yeah. it um mm. But the idea that they're like, you need to be, kind of take the high road, you know, like as a Christian, your expectation is so high that you need to be willing to sacrifice yourself for the better of others. And I think that's an important message for Christians. Yeah. I don't think, I agree. I don't think this is an evangelistic tool. I don't think this is something you show people like, hey, you're not a Christian, watch this movie. Now you're going to want to be a Christian. I don't think. Yeah. Uh, as a Christian, I don't think media is meant to be evangelistic. I don't think there's any yeah. any uh, purpose in that. It it's purely relational. You know, it should be. Yeah. If you want to be an evangelist, go live like one. You I know, feel like yeah. <laughs> go live go, like. Stop Christ. wasting my time with movies. I have to watch yeah. movies a lot. I try to keep up with things. Don't make me watch these. Yeah. So I can have a sense of completionism. <laughs> well, I doing? apparently I failed. This was my whole my whole mission this whole time was to trick you i tried to well, snare you in you tried to make me work. a christian <laughs> you tried to draw me in <laughs> a little web i'm sorry you failed you failed to make me a christian where did, we started with the Arrowverse, and then we got on a suicide squad yes and then we went to god's not dead it was such a weird trajectory so far and luckily with the kissing booth we're going to be staying on the trend of <laughs> the worst movies ever made and i think you're gonna love it i can't I wait gonna, i'm so excited you're gonna have a really fun time with it because it is a good time <laughs> watch it with your loved ones bring them close i can't experience my wife my wife won't watch movies with me 
<laughs> I can't do that to her again. <laughs> I thought you were going to say she, she can't go through another one of those. <laughs> but, she knows uh, what's going to happen. <laughs> where where can people find you, Ross? How can they get hold you? You can find stuff? me on YouTube. Um, just my name, Ross McIntyre. My channel is uh, extremely famous. I'm a celebrity now. Yep. So if you, you should already know any, who I am. Any CW Arrowverse questions you have, his channel is great. He's, he's got plans, <laughs> no, weekly no. weekly breakdowns of the next coming seasons. Uh, Arrow, Flash, well, Black actually, Lightning, I won't, Legends of Tomorrow. I may have something planned. I may have something planned. What's the other one? Supergirl. Anything. I may have something Flash-related planned. Yeah? Is it what we talked yeah, about? I, I'll tell the, you after. The it might be thing? what we talked about. I think we talked we'll about We'll see. It. <laughs> may. Maybe it's gonna be. But uh yeah, thanks for doing this, Ross. It was uh Absolutely. I'm glad, I'm glad that we finished this trilogy. We'll this classic film trilogy. It I, will go down in history. Godfather, God's not dead. <laughs> um Dark I, Knight. I don't think they'll make a fourth one. Lord of the Rings, Star Wars. I don't think this No, one... I don't I don't warrant another one. I don't know what Pure Flix is doing, but I think are they starting to like lean away from doing this kind of movies? No, they, they just think? came out with Unbroken Two. You know that, that Angelina I Jolie. Never, I know this was the first. Was that like a very Christian movie, or are they just made I think, it Christian? I I don't know his story super well. Um, I think he was okay. Christian, but then they like okay. so the movie, the book I think covers his post uh, prison internment uh, a little bit, right? But the movie doesn't, right? And so okay. Pure Flix picked it up and made it very Christian. I think. Um, no, of course, <laughs> he's going to be a super so, Christian now. Yeah, so I, I'm wondering, I'm curious to see it now after seeing God's Not Dead 3, because okay. the first two God's Not Deads were so tone deaf, and I expected yeah. this one to be the same, and I assumed Unbroken 2 would be the same, but now I saw it, I was like, maybe they figured things out, maybe Unbroken 2 maybe. won't be so bad, but maybe. there's no reason why they needed to name it Unbroken 2. It could have been, no. it yeah. could have been his name, it could have been a different, like, you could have told the what story- a weird- what a weird IP to bank off of. Unbroken. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. No one was clamoring for an unbroken two. Well, and yeah, so no one, it's not really beneficial and it's only going to frustrate people who are not aware of what it is. They're right. like, oh, I really like the first one. This number two, maybe there's. It's like when, uh, it's like what, when the asylum made Titanic two. It's just like that. Yeah. Although. <laughs> Why? Oh, the asylum. That that's sad. That pure flicks and the asylum are almost in the same category. If we get into an asylum rabbit hole, man, in this podcast, we're never going to get out. <laughs> we're never. Gonna, <laughs> we have to stay away from those movies because they're dangerous. Because once you watch one, you want to watch them all. Oh, I haven't. I don't think I've seen any of them. But maybe uh, we'll see after oh, the kissing booth you, if our relationship maybe survives. <laughs> if I mean, the kissing booth is a movie about relationships. It's that's about the strongest romance of our time. Oh man! You have so much. I've said you, Alan. <laughs> the things that are coming your way, the <laughs> images you're going to absorb into your head, <laughs> will stay with oh. you until the day you die. I hope. Oh <laughs> I man! Stay with me. Well, well, we'll have that coming out probably in a few weeks. I don't know your schedule, but we'll Sweet. figure we'll figure that out when it's, we can. It'll figure it out. Work. Yeah. And uh, but yeah, thanks again for coming on, and uh, we'll be back with Absolutely. the podcast in a couple of days. <laughs>